Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and it's Brick Hall O'Clock! With a single Bricklink package full of lovely Lego goodness. Mmm. Good, good. Well, no subscriber package this week, but I think this uh, single Bricklink package should make up for it by being full of wonderful extravagances. I must have been feeling flush <laughs> at the time of ordering. Uh, because I've made a couple of purchases that are, well, I usually would have left on the table, let's say. Oh, they're all in individual little bags. Um, and the little reminder that I wrote for myself this time was barding and fish and chips. Uh, and they represent the two extravagances that I made. So I may even start with those, but I can see the first one already. It is one of these wonderful old barding pieces from the old castle sets and this one is one of the hardest ones to get so it must have been patreon supporter day or something like that where i get all your wonderful contributions but it may well have been worth it because that looks absolutely perfect i can't see any damage on that and this piece is really beautiful isn't it not only have we got the armor for the horse and this lovely silver uh color with the uh sort of bolts holding it all together but we've also got this lovely gold i think it's sort of a I don't know, like a, a, a intricate pattern, I suppose, all over it in different ways, uh, with the lion with the crown on as the main motif of the owner. And both clips are intact. It's a bit grubby on the back, but I'll give it a very careful clean. And wow, it looks lovely, doesn't it? Uh, so this part was unique to the set 70404, King's Castle from 2013. Uh, where I suppose it was the king's horse, really, rather than that sort of head knight. Uh, but I'm definitely going to use it for one of the attendees to my joust. Uh, so I'll give it a white horse, because it kind of looks like a goodie would have that. And they always have a white horse, after all, by tradition. Uh, and in the original set, that had kind of a, a gold horse helmet on it as well, which was very, very expensive indeed. It wasn't actually available in this seller, otherwise I might have <laughs> felt like the inclination to get that as well. But anyway, I'll have to look out for that. But the only ones in the world seem to be uh, ridiculous money. So I might have to see if I can get one of my existing horse armour pieces, which I don't have one in the right colour. I suppose that's the sort of closest uh, to add on there. I'm not sure if that looks right. Uh, we do have one in the kind of gunmetal colour that's going spare. Oh, that's a lot better, isn't it? Maybe that will work. Quite like it with the unicorn horn on as well, but I can always add something different on there. Maybe a gem or something like that might look good. Yeah, it doesn't entirely go, doesn't it? I suppose he doesn't need to have uh, a horse helmet, but uh, anyway, very, very nice indeed. So I have to work out who's to go on that. Uh, I don't really have any of the uh, lion with uh, crown people yet. Uh, I do have this banner piece, which I can put onto uh, a lance and have him sort of holding it at a sort of 45 degree angle. So it looks great, sort of announcing his own arrival. <laughs> and I've got a few of these sort of shields and even a, um, uh, a breastplate as well for when I do get uh, some of the figures for this line. It must be one of the harder ones to get hold of because I've been accumulating these for quite a while. So yeah, he's going to look absolutely great on that horse in my cabinet. Yes. King Leo or something like that, we'll call him. Or maybe Prince Leo. They can't all be kings, can they? But that is an absolutely lovely addition. So that was one of my extravagances. Very nice. And uh, he'll go very well fighting maybe Basil the Bat Lord, uh, who I've still got lingering around on my desk just because he's so cool. Uh, right, OK. So I think the other one's going to be harder to spot from the outside of the bag. So I'll probably just start ripping into all of these at the same time. I've got a rare orange crab. They don't often come in orange. They come in these sort of bright yellowish orange. Uh, and, well, that's just slight variety for my cabinet. A tentacle. Another piece for that plane that I'm putting together, the passenger plane, 3181. Uh, golly, there's so many parts that I needed for that. No wonder it's uh, highly priced. It would have saved me a lot of effort uh, to get it in one go. Uh, now, this is a really interesting part. So it's a sort of cabin front uh, for either a train or a great big truck or something. Uh, but this one has got... The printing of Octan with the Octan logo. So that's not a sticker, that is printed on. And that's because it came from an old junior set, uh, 4654 tanker truck from 2003, which looks a bit ghastly using some really big clunky pieces. But 
Look at the back of it. Wow, shiny. <laughs> it's got a very shiny tank, hasn't it? Uh, I imagine uh, not many of those parts, if I were to buy them now, would still have all of that chrome uh, intact, having been sort of bumping around in a play box for a long time uh, since that was released in 2003. But uh, I've put them on my wanted list anyway, just to see if I can get some. And maybe I'll be able to get enough to just have, you know, one upper section, and one lower section to make a, a shiny tank somewhere in my city. I don't know. Uh, but I just like that because it was different. Uh, and I could use it for some sort of truck or, or to uh, do a new train. Or I could just look out for a second one or even just use one and modify my uh, 7939 cargo train the one we've called uh, the Hornet. Uh, so tell me what you think of that. Do you think the Hornet would be spoiled by having Octan written on the front of it? You don't often get oil-sponsored uh, locomotives, do you? But uh, I do quite like it. So, yeah, maybe I'll get another one of those. Uh, maybe you've got a better idea for what I should do with this one. Uh, then, ah, yes, more castle panel pieces to make all of our towers even taller. And this is uh, slightly damaged, actually, one. I'm not sure if they mentioned that. It looks like it's been trodden on at some point. You can see the sort of crease there where somebody's trod on that bit, probably hurt their foot badly, and it's slightly bent. I'm able to, may be able to push that back a little bit with hot water or something like that to really make it a little bit softer. Uh, but I don't think it's going to detract from its use. You can kind of see it a little bit from a distance, but uh, not too bad. Anyway, it's the more important printed one that's uh, relatively difficult to get, so I'm glad to have that anyway. Uh, then we've got ooh, one different baggie with a plate in old grey, because I'm collecting those for a project that I haven't yet announced, and some wings for somebody we'll see in a little bit. Then we've got some glitter domes. Now, these are kind of like snow domes in a way for a sort of, you know, one of those toys you sort of shake and it sort of flies it around. Uh, but these came only in one set, actually. Uh, 41067, Bell's Enchanted Castle from 2016, which I think is the film where Harry Potter's given the quest of the ring by the Fellowship in that castle. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? Unmistakable. Yes. So I'll use those. I don't know what else actually, maybe under the sea, maybe in that bottom level. I'll have to see how they look under UV to make that decision, I think. Uh, then in here, we've got ah, all the windows I need for my plane. So that's good. Lovely, lovely. And then, oh, the final two of these. That makes another build possible now. Look a bit grubby, but not too scratched. So that's all right. Shouldn't have to polish those. Very nice. There's this which I don't need anymore because somebody actually sent one in. Uh, it's very strange, actually. I wanted one of these for a little buggy uh, in this lime colour, this sort of two-seated, five-wide part. Uh, and then somebody sent one in as part of uh, a subscriber package. So, um, yeah, I don't actually need this anymore. So maybe I need ideas for that. Though I probably don't need two of them in my city now. Uh, anyway, uh, and if you want to send something to a future Brick Call, you can by sending it into the usual address. Uh, and mark it under £30 if you're posting it for abroad, and it will fly through customs. Uh, fantastic. Uh, so a couple of uh, trans orange bricks that I probably don't need anymore. I think they were in mind of the volcano uh, for my deep sea cabinet, which I've now, well, I think I've completed it. You never know, I might be adding to it at some point, but uh, it's complete for now. We've got a minifigure here, just a normal sort of city one, but she was well priced, and it was from a set that I... Uh, haven't got or don't intend to get and she's got the medium-sized legs which always are useful and they're quite expensive weirdly on their own I don't know quite why they're so costly but it's you know, usually over a pound just to get one set of legs so in the builder minifigure wall I always try and prioritize medium-sized ones if they're available uh, but yeah I just like the torso uh, as I say I haven't got any other sets with that on so it was pretty good uh, deal. Uh, so that came, uh, she came in the Dirt Bike Racer set 60387 4x4 Off Roader Adventures from 2023, uh, which is a set I was thinking of getting actually uh, for the truck mainly, uh, removing all the big wheels and a sort of uh, massive suspension. It's a bit oversized and trying to sort of convert it back into a normal truck. But then it's a bit long and I thought, well, actually, you'd need to add quite a few parts around the wheel arches. And, uh, and by the time I got to it, I thought, well, I'd probably have to buy as many parts again just to convert it. And then I'd end up with a normal looking truck. So <laughs> I didn't bother in the end. But uh, yeah, it, it just kind of interested me, the colour scheme of it, really. This looks like a literal mixed bag of little pieces. Ah, but some of them are very important indeed. 
yes, for some of my collections. So I'm going to start right away with the purple cloak. Uh, now this, you can probably guess, is something uh, that I need for my Magneto, who I've got to one side, who I had given a dark red cloak to, but as soon as I saw that somebody had a purple one, which is what he should have, uh, then, well, I had to get that. So that will be going on him very soon. I'm just going to pan down a little bit so you can see more of the parts as I'm tipping them out. Uh, so that will improve my uh, X-Man collection. Uh, and then I've got a lovely head, which is a Benny head, as you can probably recognise. But it's for this side that we want it. Uh, oh, no, is that damage? That looks like damage, that bit of yellow in the mouse. Probably not irredeemable damage, but I think it is. Oh, that's a shame. If it is, I think it is. Might be able to touch it with a tiny bit of red something or other. Anyway, uh, that I just love for the eye expression with the little hearts on. Looks absolutely amazing. And that only came in the 70848 Sistar Party Crew from 2019. So, yeah, I've been, uh, I'm always looking out for those. I think I've got like three now, so I really should start using them. Um, another thing for X Men is this lovely head here. So the X-Men are all in skin tone, so I'm going to do them as a little uh, setup that's separate from my city, possibly in a cabinet in this room or something like that. Um, so that's why I've got skin tone head. And this one came from the character The Vulture, who's been in four sets, uh, including 76114, Spider-Man Spider-Crawler from 2019, which is very cool and very creepy. If you see it moving, it really does scuttle with those legs moving. Yeah, looks horrid. <laughs> But um, yeah, it's this head I wanted because I thought it looked very much like uh, an old Professor X from X-Men as well, Professor Xavier. And I thought if I was going to do my build for his uh, yellow kind of floating uh, chair, then essentially I'd need a character in that. And this was the best head that I could come up with. It just looks like he's a bit older and in a bit of a mood, but he's got sort of wrinkles on his face and all the rest of it. So it looks like he's in a real sort of stress, like he's holding onto his head, trying to think hard with his telepathic powers. So that's why I like that. So that's another one for my uh, X-Men collection. Uh, speaking of which, I've started getting bits together for my Phoenix. And so far I've got the hair, which is sort of five... Uh, I was going to call it Five Star, but that's a band from the 80s. <laughs> Fire Star, that's what it is, yeah. Fire Star uh, hair. And then I've got two heads. That one where she just looks a bit miffed. I don't really like that one too much, actually. And this one, which is a male head, actually, uh, which is on another one of the minifigures that I've uh, turned to yellow uh, skin in the past. Uh, and I just liked it for the red eyes. So the fact that it's sort of got hollow cheeks, I'm not sure if I like. But then again, uh, maybe, you know, the, the character of the Phoenix is going through a big transformation and whatever. So maybe that's a really appropriate head. Anyway, I need to find a good body and legs for her. Uh, and then I can sort of build that big flame-winged phoenix type build as well. And that'll be really fun, I think. So anyway, that's as far as I've got with that one. Uh, we've got some nice faded pink legs. Oh, look at that. That's a completely different colour to that. So there's another part with a bit of an issue, I must say. Hmm. Almost worth mentioning. Um, and that uh, those legs came from the Series 2 pop star. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they're looking a bit grubby, actually. But then, I don't know, some of my jeans are grubby, so <laughs> maybe it's usable still. Not too bad. Uh, a baby's bottle that I wanted for uh, the mother that I stole the baby's bottle for. Yes, I am a milk snatcher, uh, because I stole this for my um, Stork 2.0 build. Uh, so I need to replenish that where it came from. We've got the lovely torso of a Crusader Knight, as they were called back in the late 80s, and this would have come in all sorts of sets, like 6060 Knight's Challenge from 1989, which is an absolutely beautiful set, uh, and definitely something that I'll be replicating in my own way as part of my eventual Final Castle scene, which will be in the uh, new uh, Brick Nottingham 2.0 room. That's where that's going to go, and it'll be separate from the city, uh, just a little medieval sort of side uh, project, if you will, because I haven't really got room in the current uh, universe. So yeah, more information on Brick Nottingham 2.0 uh, relatively soon, I think. Uh, in fact, I'm meeting the builder later today, so <laughs> that's going to be really interesting. Anyway, so that's nice for that collection. Another one of those blue flowers I just used on the uh, build for the Botanical Garden. Purple Flames on a few sets, but I always like them because I think they look really amazing uh, under the sea. Uh, so that came on sets like 9447, Lasher's Bite Cycle from 2012, which sounds a bit vicious. 
Uh, and then, oh yeah, this. So this is just a normal um, helmet for uh, a sort of racer minifigure or whatever, but it's in trans clear. Uh, and I just thought that was really interesting. And you can get a Nexo Knight's uh, visor in trans clear as well. And I thought if I combined the two, then I could kind of make either the sort of prize that everyone was jousting for as being the crystal helm, or uh, maybe it's one knight's wearing the crystal helm. Maybe it's a magic helmet that gives him some sort of advantage. I don't know. But uh, yeah, that came in quite a few older sets, including 6939, Saucer Centurion from 1994, uh, which I, that just completely passed me by. It must have been uh, when I wasn't paying much attention to Lego uh, from the Space Spirus range. Don't even remember that either. Uh, where it's on the droid. Uh, and I'm thinking that Russ had that set because a lot of the pieces, or maybe he just bought uh, one from somebody who did. But anyway, because a lot of the parts that came in his uh, uh, big selection of pieces were those uh, angled plates in red and black that I used at the bottom of the uh, uh, Atlantis pyramid. Anyway, uh, I digress. Yes, yeah, so this is uh, the first part of a lovely crystal helmet for my castle scene. Lovely little touch there. It could be like on a plinth. Uh, being supplied by the king uh, as the bounty that everyone's fighting over. It's either that or the uh, hand of his daughter in marriage, isn't it? Wow, check that out. That's bigger than I thought it'd be. Uh, it's definitely too big for a minifigure, but I knew that. Uh, but this has been on a big fig before, but also uh, on the 8822 Gargoyle Bridge set from 2006, where it's used as the head of a battering ram, which is a great idea. Uh, and one that I might actually totally steal, though on my own battering ram, I think, uh, model. Uh, and it's even kind of been dented. I just hammer it into shape to make it, or also because it's been bashing on <laughs> castle gates repeatedly. But yeah, I love that. So it could be a sort of standard topper or something, but it almost looks too big for that. So I quite like the idea of it being on the front of a battering ram that's just, uh, you know, to one side in the castle. Anyway, it's a part that was too good to pass up on and it, I wondered how it was attached. It's a, 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 an axle uh, there because it didn't seem to have anything on the back of this part. So yeah, that should be easy enough to use. I like it a lot. Very good. Next bag. Uh, some blue panels, one by two. I can't remember what they're for. Uh, two little sort of jet bits there for my uh, plane. The 318 one again. Ah, and then there's this which is a nice sort of dress piece that I thought a peasant could wear in my castle scene, because I think I'm going to need more peasants than dignitaries, really. Uh, and there aren't many sort of peasant-looking outfits out there. Uh, so, yeah, I have to get them where I can. So this one's actually from Professor Pomona Sprout from the set 4867 Hogwarts from 2011. And uh, now that is the set later on in the same movie, isn't it, where Harry has to drop the ring in the volcano... Yeah, that's right. But but for first, he's got to get through these gates. Yeah, unforgettable. Uh, so these, uh, this is from that lady character in that set. And yeah, I like that great deal. It looks very sort of crudely stitched uh, and a sort of dingy colour that a peasant uh, would love to wear. <laughs> and then, oh, we have a problem by. Yeah, this is something that I said I'd stop buying, uh, but haven't. Uh, and that's because my name is Robin and I'm a brick addict. Uh, and <laughs> it's been about six months without buying a magma drone, uh, but I fell off the wagon. <laughs> so, so these magma drones come from set uh, 8971, Aerial Defense Unit from 2009, and, well, they're just these lovely uh, sort of armed robots, basically, that go marching around to the magma commander's orders, and I've probably got a bag of about 10 of them. I still haven't used them, and now, well, it looks like I've got 12. So, uh, yeah, I've broken my addiction, fallen off the wagon, uh, which is just so sad. So sad. Yeah. Oh, well, less said about that, the better. So we've got two more of those, uh, and I just love them. I don't know what it is about them. Maybe it's the silly antenna on their heads. Maybe it's the robot arm with the great big gun on it. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if I uh, <laughs> fall off the wagon again and get even more in the future. Because they're just too good. I'm going to have to in Brick Nottingham 2.0. Um, make sure that I use my collections because we've got all of the uh, foot soldiers from the Ninja Turtle line that Shredder will be commanding. Got to use those. Got to use these ones. And what's the other thing I've been collecting? Absolutely loads of. Oh, there's all sorts of stuff, isn't there? Anyway, I must use all of it. All, all of my Alien Conquest aliens as well. Golly, there's loads of those. Uh, so here's another series minifigure. 
and it's not one that I really needed as such, but it's just a gap in my collection, and he was going for cheap. Uh, he's the Series 15 Laser Mech, and he's got a very interesting helmet with a sort of uh, face that is a almost a sort of heartbeat sort of thing, electric uh, current going across there, and a very nice shoulder pads, and this is where those wings connect. Don't know why they're in separate bags, but that's fine. So obviously he can fly as well. Look at that. He's rather spectacular. Uh, I haven't got the little sword that he comes with, the sort of laser sword, I suppose. Uh, so I put that on my wanted list and I'll uh, hopefully get that in another haul. It's been in a few sets, so it shouldn't be too crazy rare or crazy expensive. But yeah, he's kind of got good Tron vibes. He could go my alien cantina, I suppose. Uh, that's definitely something that needs to be prioritised uh, when it comes to Brick Nottingham 2.0. So there we go. I really like him, actually. He's very cool indeed. Then, for another big project, which is the old grey plates. Ugh, golly, that's filthy. Uh, I've just been buying loads of old grey big plates wherever I see them for a reasonable price to make something big. What is it? You don't know. I know, you don't know. <laughs> but we'll be doing that, uh, hopefully, in the new Lego room as well, where it will fit a lot better, I must say. Some of these projects I've been deliberately holding off uh, for because I kind of knew that Brick Nottingham 2.0 was potentially a goer uh, and as a result I sort of thought well I'd rather do it once properly than twice you know once badly and then have to redo it so uh, that's for the plane there for that project again there can be all sorts of shapes so yeah I just need a lot of them and they're relatively uh, spread out to the four winds because everyone's been collecting them to make old sets with so lots and lots of those very nice oh a sticker sheet Lovely. Check that out. Is it that way up? There we go. Wow. So I already bought one of these from the uh, Jay's uh, arcade pod, but this comes from 71716 Lloyd Avatar arcade pod from 2020. Uh, and I just love the iconography of these big stickers that went on the side of that uh, game cabinet. This lovely dragon with some Chinese symbols uh, with all of this sort of uh, backdrop sort of whizzing by. And I thought I could do some sticker surgery. Maybe that would be a sticker or maybe I can get a long one. Just chop off all the irregular bits or maybe even patch some of that into that hole there or something. I don't really know. Uh, but, you know, even if I just cut out the dragon kind of like that, it would look really cool on something or other. So I don't know. But anyway, yeah, very cool. And that could be a sign for a gaming arcade. And there's all of these to stick in windows. So, yeah, that will probably join my uh, Ninjago City. Uh, and part of the reason I bought it as well, because it was 26 pence. And, well, well, it'd be rude not to at that price, wouldn't it? Lovely. So that is that. Uh, what else have we got? We've got a few blue tiles. 1x8s, which I think, again, for the aircraft. So I'll stick those over there. Then I've got some uh, more trans-neon orange, or just trans-orange, actually, uh, tiles, which I think were for the vol volcano, which I don't need any more. And then we're just down to one more bag which is the other extravagance remember i mentioned fish and chips well this is the incredibly faded they did tell me this pieces for fish and chips because da, 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 da. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> now i knew they were going to be manky but they are really manky aren't they but at least they're straight uh they're not falling off now i might be able to be very very careful and try and clean that second one uh to try and get it uh, to the quality of the first one, which I think is good, uh, considering its age, uh, so they match a bit better. I might not be able to, I might not risk it. I'm going to really try probably just that corner, just try and dab it with some uh, washing up suds or something like that, because I definitely don't want to uh, abrade, uh, abrade the surface so it sort of loses some of the blue and the red. Uh, but these are incredibly old uh, bricks, coming as they do from the set 1592, Town Square Castle scene from 1980, which, in my opinion, is blatantly based on Windsor, in that there's a castle there, fish and chips, sort of bookshops and stuff like that. It looks very, very Windsor, uh, England, uh, very near where the actual Lego land is. Uh, and I thought I'd add these to my fish and chip shop that's on my beachfront. Uh, and basically, I thought I could do is it, do it like that and incorporate it into the sign where we've already got the great big Duplo fish and it could just go in the level underneath. So that's where I'm going to try and use them. Uh, so it's a bit of extravagance because they're, well, it said they were yellowed, uh, which they are. Uh, and it said they were going to be a bit manky, which they are. Uh, and they were still £2 each, which shows how, 
<laughs> rare and old they are. But I just thought they were too British to not have in a city like uh, Brick Nottingham. So I thought I'd give it a go. And the fact that they're really sort of manky kind of fits in with uh, where I'm using them. Because, well, fish and chip shops pump loads of uh, oil and, uh, you know, fumes into the air. And if this had never been cleaned, well, it probably looked like this. So it actually adds uh, a little bit to my city, if you ask me. Oh, there's a little flap there, actually, of stick. I have to be careful with that. Um, yeah, so maybe it actually adds to the scene. I don't know. So I'm going to try that probably straight away uh, in my city and see how it looks. So uh, I might show you a picture of that uh, now before I do the uh, attempt at cleaning it. Uh, so this is the before picture. Uh, and we'll see how it looks when it's in its final cleaned uh, setting uh, in the same way. But I love it. I do, yes. From a distance, it doesn't look too diseased. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wonder what all that grime actually is. Yeah, best not think about it. Best not think about it. Um, yeah, so, wow, not the biggest haul ever, but absolutely chock full of awesome pieces, if you ask me. Uh, not only have we got stickers, loads of uh, old grey for that uh, project. We've got a very interesting Octane cab. You'll have to tell me if you think I should use that on the uh, 7939 train. Uh, the extravagant, lovely barding for the collection for the Joust that'll eventually be in uh, the new Lego room. Loads of nice minifigures, including the two addictive uh, magma drones. Some parts, some vital parts for my uh, two parts for my uh, X-Man scene, which is how I kind of picked the store, actually. The fish and chips being a lovely addition at the end when I saw it. And I thought, yeah, go on then. I must have just got my uh, Patreon money for the month. <laughs> anyway, a lovely haul. Uh, yeah, couldn't be better. Well, not the biggest haul, but it is all killer, no filler. So very happy with that. And hopefully the fish and chips uh, signs in position were worth the money. You'll have seen it, and I haven't yet, having not taken that photo uh, in real time yet. Uh, but yeah, a wonderful haul. So as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more awesome brick hauls. Do also subscribe to the main channel, Robin Hood Bricks, for the use of all these bricks in future builds. And if you value this channel, or that one, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. And if you want to send something to a future Brick call, you can by sending it to the usual P.O. Box address. And we'll get into that alongside my usual BrickLink purchases. Uh, so uh, until next time, when we'll be doing another haul on this channel or a build on the main channel, see you! Now the question is, how many magma drones is enough? It's probably the number I've got, isn't it? <laughs>